Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to the first Bluebirds Nest of the 23-24 season. And what a few weeks it's been at Haverford West County. For those of you watching this episode, a big shout out to all of our sponsors that you can see across the bottom of our screens. Uh, no doubt many of our partners will end up on the nest throughout this season. But for episode one in particular, I wanted to highlight a particular uh, Macron, our official match day kit and leisure wear provider for this coming season. They've already dropped uh, three kits. I'm sure you've all seen them. They, they've been superb. The European kit in particular, I know, is having orders come in from all corners of the globe, not just Pembrokeshire. Um, I'm going to hesitate from using the word modelling, but I'm delighted that I'm going to be showcasing lots of the leisure wear throughout this season, uh, starting with this lovely navy T-shirt that was uh, one of the 500 gifted by Macron and the club to the first 500 supporters that took their seats in that infamous B36 Torshawn fixture uh, in the Cardiff City Stadium. For purchases, uh, please scan the QR code on screen or visit the club website, haverfordwestcountyafc.com and click shop at the top of the page. Genuinely, like I said, I've been really impressed with all the items on there, so well worth a browse. Now then, we'll dive straight in. For the first time this season, we welcome a guest, and it's a man who needs no introductions whatsoever, Mr. Tony Pennock. Tony, welcome back. Evening. How are we? Good. Well, it's, it's been a, a whirlwind uh, few weeks, but when discussing with people, you know, they've been asking, when's the nest coming back? Your name was a unanimous decision about getting you, uh, getting you on to discuss these last few weeks. We... Last spoke on the nest, yourself, Rob, and I discussing the upcoming European adventures. We well, we dreamt of a successful experience, but what it ended up being was a whole lot more, wasn't it? But looking back now, in a couple of weeks uh, after it's all sort of come to a close, how do you feel? What you know, what's the reflection summary of that period of time? When, when's the season end? I'm shattered already, I gotta be honest. <laughs> well, I don't know how the boys feel, but um. Yeah, well, I think we've all come down now, back to earth after the exploits. You know, the boys were unbelievable. The club was unbelievable throughout it all. You know, to to do the logistics that the need to go into planning all the games and the travelling at short st- short um, space um, after getting through the first round to go to the Faroe Islands the week after. You know, things like that. People don't realise how much goes into it, and um, yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. You know, fortunately, I'd done it as a player once, but um, to do it as part of the management staff and with it, with our club, it, it, it's just something that uh, none of us will ever forget. Going back to, to the start of that period of time, and I was recently on the, the Coleman's Dream podcast um, and was asked about the, the potential prospect of uh, summer football in Wales. And I said that, you know, competitive fixtures at that moment going into the European adventures would have been slightly detrimental because what you and Wagi and, and others at the club, you know, that Julie obviously in arranging those fixtures, the, the build-up pre-Europe fixtures, there was a couple of Cymru South teams, obviously Penabont, who were also in Europe. We flew over to Northern Ireland for that LAN friendly and, you know, a phenomenal experience playing Michael Duff's first game, I think it was, with the Swans. What was you thinking about choosing those type of opponents? We were very fortunate, really. The Swansea game, obviously, we played them last year and Russell Martin had asked us again, um, and it was hard to confirm everything, really, because we, we'd booked Carmarthen as well later. And I, you know, we planned for two pre-seasons. We had a pre-season if we'd made Europe and a pre-season if we hadn't made Europe. And up until the Newtown game, we were working on both of them. Um, so Carmarthen was booked in for a, a different date. And in fairness to, to A's at Carmarthen, once we got into Europe, you know, we spoke, we couldn't do that date. And, and he offered me another one. And so that was the first game we had. The boys had two weeks off before they then started doing some some work themselves and then then we had a week's training for the Carmarthen game and then the Larn run really again it was, it was a bit of a bit of luck really but great for us in terms of the FAW have a pot of money that anybody who qualifies for Europe um, is allowed to access that money to try and get a, a, a good friendly before your European game so as soon as I made it I was made aware of that after the whistle at Newtown and then basically looked at which Irish teams were in our group or in our competition and which weren't and by luck, I got hold of the LAN chairman. He put me in touch with their secretary and, and manager. And they, they'd had a game cancelled on them like the day before, and it just fell into place. They did have another game booked in that day, but um, the team they were playing against, you know, 
agreed to change the fixture, which allowed us to fly out on that weekend and play them. And I think that was a massive thing for the lads. You know, listen, the one the one downside of that trip was Dylan Reese's injury. You know, and you know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but you know you can get injured any time. But of the whole summer, you know that that's been the biggest blow for everybody and for Dylan himself. Um, but to have that experience, you know, we flew on the Saturday morning, play, played the Saturday night, got treated like kings out there by Lan. I got to be fair to that club, you know, what a classy club that is. And then to fly back on the Sunday, some of the boys, you know, hadn't travelled with the team before, and yeah, it was it was short, it was it was a a quick time period, but it was it was valuable experience and uh, against a very good team that that um, you know we had to work hard that day. We look at the team who played that day and the kids who came on. It was just full of kids and. You know, they'll never forget that experience to play against the Irish champions in front of a couple of thousand people as well, which was which was beneficial to everybody. Um, after that, then we came back and played the Ferry again. The Ferry were always a team we were going to play if we were in the not in the Europe pre season because we know how tough Britain Ferry are, and they showed that on the night. And then I think the next game was was the Swans, then was it? Um, yeah. you know, during that week, no, we had a free weekend on that Saturday, and we all we all went to the beach, we didn't go. <laughs> We can sand castles, but we we lost a few of them along the way around Broadhaven, having a little having a little jog, shall I say? And um, we had a good day that day. But then the Swansea game the week after was perfect for us because in the week leading up, we knew by then I'd watched um, Skandija lots of times. I knew how tough it was going to be, and to stay in the game out there, we had to we had to be quite defensive, and we worked on that in training all week. And then we knew when we played Swansea, we weren't going to see much of the ball, and it was a perfect game for us before we flew out, and um, it proved to be that way. Um, yeah, we lost the game two 0 but in fairness, you know that the boys acquitted themselves really well in that Swansea game, and we knew going out to North Macedonia would be very similar, and and that's the way both legs panned out in the end. So, you know, pre-season worked well for us, really did, and um, you know it held us in good stead going into into the four European ties. Yeah, I totally agree. It, the experiences for those young, particularly the younger boys, it was you know seeing that young squad all pretty much make their debut. I know they were relatively non-competitive fixtures on paper. They, they were hotly contested on the pitch. So seeing them and then, you know, seeing the young boys against household names, Joe Allen, Piro, Cabango, you know, Piro went for, was 11 million to Leeds a few weeks later, you know, and you got our lads coming up against them. It was, it probably proved to be a great platform for those guys to build upon. Um, into the European games, I think it was rightly noted as well on the score of your feed and things like that, how, Young a squad that ended up being particularly in that home fixture, um, the Scandesia game, you weren't afraid to use those youngsters coming on. I think it was Harry, Yori, and um, Lucas who finished the game on the pitch. Callum, I think, was pretty close to coming on that fixture again. I know you'd sent him to warm up a couple of times, he was almost required. And just this weekend, Dan John made his Cymru Premier debut as well. So the, the academy conveyor belt continues to churn out these these young talents. That must be a huge asset to you. Well, if you look at the injuries we had last year, we had 141 missing players in 34 games last year. We're already up to 27, I think we are, in, in five games this season already. Um, we, we've, we, we've needed them. We've needed the academy. You know, the staff of the academy done a fantastic job. The grassroots teams that they played for in Pembrokeshire shows how strong the Pembrokeshire League is really and and um, there's a lot of talented coaches in the area because because there are a lot of good kids in Pembrokeshire, and, and that's that's been shown in in the 12, 13 months that I've been here. The academy has um, played a massive part in the success we've had, and uh, long may that continue. You know, I've, obviously, I spent a lot of my career as a as a academy manager and a, a 18s manager, 23s manager, and working with the younger players, even as a first team coach. And you know, if somebody's good enough to get the opportunity and. You know, it doesn't matter whether Harry John's 16, 17 now as he is, or Dan John, Yori, you know, no qualms in Yori starting on Saturday along with Harry. You know, Yori acquitted himself really well last year and he did it on Saturday. Um, Lucas has come on, Seth has played, Luke Owen's been around the squad, Callum Shirt, um, John Chester's, you know, people forget Ethan Knott's only, only here under 19 as well, Rio Dyer. You know, the, the Rio Dyer, Ifan, Harry John, you know, I class them as senior players. I don't look at them as academy kids. They're, they're senior players and that's the way they, they should, they carry themselves around the building. That's the way they act and behave themselves. And you know, when they get the opportunities, you know, they have to perform the same as a Jazz Richards. 
or Ricky Watts and Dylan Reese. You know, that's how they stay in the team. That's how they get their opportunities, and and they're the people they need to look at in training every night that we train and every match we play to try and uh, get in the team ahead of them. And you know, we you know, again, I can't thank the academy and the Pembrokeshire League and the clubs that they came from for uh, the fantastic work they put into them when they were younger. Mixed in then with a lot of experienced players already at the club and those guys, seven new additions across uh, the summer months, some pre-Europe, some sort of do in Europe. Um, obviously, Martel, I think Kai and <clears throat> excuse me, Kai and Tyrese have played, I think, almost every fixture. You mentioned there, uh, Ivan, Caden, uh, Rio and things like that. How are those guys settling in? How have they uh, fitted into the things that, that were happening last season? I think the European games and travelling helped the squad knit together more than it would have if we hadn't had that experience. You know, we spent a lot of time in hotels and buses and planes and airports and everything else. And um, people get to know each other quite quickly when they're in a com- confined space like that. Especially the Scandinavia trip, you know, with the table tennis room and the team room and the boys spent a lot of time in there together. And when you've got the experience of jazz and, and the other senior players, you know, that, that brings that, that togetherness in the group and um, that's helped us. Um, obviously now that's gone, that's done, but it, it's definitely given us a kickstart for the season. I think coming back down to earth has been tough for some people, me included, I'll be honest. And um, you know, our performances haven't quite hit the levels that we did, we'd hope we would have. We know how tough this league is, and we can't just expect to turn up and and win games of football at home or away. And um, you know, it's proven that already. The league looks quite quite even this year. Obviously, TNS are obviously the team. Every everyone's a catch, but. You know, Connors, Key and Pennebon, Bala, Met, Ponda um, you know, there, there's so many good teams in this 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 division this year. You know, we saw how tough it was against Barry the other night. Carnarvon came here, you know, and were very unfortunate not to go away with a clean shoot and three points. Barry the same two 0 up and watch he pulled us out of out of the five with two late goals. So, you know, we don't know all illusions that um, just because we played in Europe last year, it doesn't mean that we're guaranteed anything this year, far from it. But what we should be doing as individuals, as a group, as a club, is is striving to have that experience again. I know I am. I know I want it again. And hopefully the players do. But um, uh, the win on Saturday was a massive boost for us. You know, we played really well again, first half in it for about a 25-minute period. And then then we end up 1-0 down, but the boys' heads didn't drop. And that's three games on the bounce now. We've come from behind to to draw and and win on Saturday. And that, that shows great determination, great spirit great fight within the group for each other and um, and it, it, that was pleasing to see but you know it would be nice if we could get a first goal in one of our games coming up but um, you know Newtown home Saturday is going to be tough because I, I was at their game Friday night and you know they picked up their first win as well against Met on Friday again Met a very good side that was the first goals that they'd conceded all season so we know we know the Newtown are going to be a tough test on Saturday Yeah and, and on that you, you said in the interview after Colwyn Bay that it's it's six points from the first five. It's only one shy of what we managed at this point last year. And I think we came out of the traps flying last year. And I know it was, it was tongue-in-cheek, as we say, but we were celebrating being top of the league after a couple of games. It's, and we're only one point shy of that. And be, in all honesty, perhaps we haven't been at our best. So it's not too bad a start, it's, especially, like you said, as, as competitive as this league is this year. I think this time last year, Abus hadn't picked up a point. So it was sort of... The right thing was on the wall with clubs like that. This year, it's it's so much more competitive. Clubs have strengthened who last year were in relegation battles. And again, apart from TNS, I've said it in the past, it's almost a race for second. There should be a, a trophy in the, for second place in this league. But you mentioned that we faced Newt down this weekend then. Um, we obviously overcame them at, uh, at Latham Park in May. In the playoffs, there was a lot more perhaps at stake there, but still, it's going to be a competitive fixture. How are things... Uh, Ramping up in training and things this week, ready for that fixture this weekend. Then, yeah, as soon as we finished up at Colwell Bay on Saturday, preparations started for the lads. Oh, obviously, I was there, I've, I've been to Newtown twice this year and watched them twice once against Pennebond and once against and met on Friday night. So, I, I you know, I pretty much know their side now. They picked up their first win. Um, I'm sure Newtown are going to want to come here on the weekend and, and turn us over because you know, we went there and beat them in the playoff final. and denied them the opportunity of Europe and you know, they've been in Europe several times you know, they, they, they're a club that's done it been there and done it on numerous occasions um, so knowing Chris and knowing the staff and the players he's got there he's got some very good experienced players some very good youngsters and sadly be a tough test and going back to what you just said yeah 
we were top after three games, and then I think we lost our next four last season. You know, by the time we got five, we've got sorry six points after five. Now we we were on eleven points after ten games. You know, we can surpass that quite easily with the five games to go. But it's easily said that, and um, you know, we still got to achieve it. And you know, we'll do everything we can on Saturday to to add twelve points tally and uh, and build on to to the next game the week after, which just happens to be uh, TNS away. <laughs> well, stranger things have happened, but. Thank you as always for your time. Uh, I'm sure we'll um, we'll cross paths again on the Bluebirds Nest throughout the season. But best of luck this weekend in the home tie uh, at the Augie Bridge Meadow, a 2:30 kickoff versus Newtown. Um, and like I said, we'll no doubt speak throughout the, the season as the the drama unfolds, as it does every year in the Cymru Premier. But again, thank you for your time and uh, catch up soon. Cheers. Thanks, right. 